has uh, pioneered uh, low power consuming so microprocessors over the, last, over the last 15 odd years. They've done a fantastic job at it. Yeah. Okay, so, so you're, you're clearly getting into that territory and uh, you've got companies like Qualcomm getting into the lower end of the net top. So how, how do you see this playing out? Uh, I think what's, what, what you're going to see in the next few years is you're going to see a number of top class companies, ARM, um, Qualcomm, Intel, you know, all competing with each other to come up with new kinds of technologies. Uh, that's, that's an immensely healthy process. Okay. And so to an extent, the companies that use ARM will be moving into Intel space. To an extent, we'll be moving a little bit into theirs. But, it, but it's, it's a huge market opportunity. And the more competition there is, the more we'll stay on, it, stay on, our, on our toes. So I, I think we're in for a, a, a lively and competitive few years. Okay. You, you, you want the, 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 the traditional geek as we know it, because you didn't go through a computer, you, you didn't go through an engineering college that, went, went, uh, that did computer, and you didn't do computer science, I don't think you did that. So yeah. how do you, how did, so you, you came into this industry with a passion for technology, right? So. Yeah, I, I, I used, I was fortunate enough to get time, you know, programming a computer when I, when I was about 13, 14, through my brother who was okay. working as a programmer. Um, and I, I sort of fell in love with them uh, very early on. Um, the, the web is um, immensely useful. So I live in the United States, but I am as well informed on the failures and occasional successes of the England cricket team <laughs> as the average Brit because of the web. Uh, and if, of course, you don't see cricket on TV in the US, but of course, cricket is on the web. That, that, that's one example. But, but what, what, it, what, what the web has meant is, is that my children are, uh, their, their educational range is far broader than it would have been, or certainly than I had when I, when I, was, when I was a youngster. And I'm, I'm astounded still at how the web is transforming all of the industries that, that we're in. What's the biggest opportunity you have spotted by uh, questioning convention? Uh, I, you know, I, I think right now that there's, there's um, a, a belief that somehow we should work to, to reduce the digital divide. Okay. I, I think that's wrong. I think we should end it. Okay. Uh, I think we should take a big audacious goal to end it. Okay. I think every child should have a computer. I think every household should be connected to the internet. Uh, uh, isn't uh, that a bit of a dream? Or um, I mean, how, how quickly do you see it happening? You know, I, I think um, it, w it would have been a dream. It was a dream in the 1930s and 40s for Western countries, for everyone to have electricity. Okay. That pretty much happened. Uh, it's certainly going to happen here in India. Uh, it's still a dream here? Yeah. Sure, <laughs> but it's going to get tackled. It was a dream for everyone to have access to television. Pretty much everybody has a, has a television. Uh, it was a dream for the common person to have a cell phone. Uh, I, I think that when you look at the power of the internet, what it does, if you have it and if you don't, the difference between them, I think it's a perfectly reasonable goal to say you need to end the digital divide. You know, maybe it's going to take 10 to 15 years, but let's plan for it now. Let's not just drift along with the haves and the have-nots. Okay. Uh, coming back to Intel, so you're an Englishman, uh, possibly going to head Intel sometime. Uh, you had Intel founded by a Hungarian uh, refugee of sorts. Uh, Intel is an American company that gets 80% of its revenue outside America. So that's as flat as it can get? And we have a lot of Indians. <laughs> we have a lot of Indians in, uh, in Intel, and I think a lot of Indians who, who will you know, return to India. And I, I think one of, the, um, one of the agenda items for the government is going to be to continue to encourage business here so that you do have a returning flow of, of, of Indians, which I think is one of the strengths of the Indian economy is a lot of people want to, want to come want back. To come back. Uh, in, Intel has always been based upon um, multinational behavior and cultures. We've, we've been like that since the very, very beginning. And we, we, think, in our, we think in our bones, we think internationally. Um, California sits looking across the Atlantic, uh, the Pacific rather, Pacific. forgive me. Uh, and and that's, how the company, that's how the company is. Most of our customers are somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you need to try and get into the minds of those customers. Okay. Uh, Fine, Sean, you, 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 you left uh, Asia, in, in a sense, uh, after being based out of Hong Kong, looking after Asia Pac sales about 10 years ago. How much has this market changed in the last 10 years? Has it, uh, has it changed more than uh, the, the, uh, the Western markets, or has it changed any less? Uh, it, 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 it's changed more. Okay. And uh, the, the transformation in India, I think, is probably the big story of the last five to seven years, a story that you've lived through, your viewers are living through. Um, 
the, the next 10 years will depend upon the big infrastructural investments. So who's going to place the long-term bets? If you're looking out 10 to 15 years, who's going to have the self-confidence to place the long-term bets? There is no question that India has the intellectual capital and the, the energy to do it, but those big long-term bets need to be made. Sean, thank you very much. Before you I say goodbye, here, here's a copy of the Forbes India magazine. This, this show's named after. All of you out there can go pick this magazine from the stand. It's a great issue. And I have to agree, it looks absolutely beautiful, and I'm going to be reading this on the plane. <laughs> thank you very much.